23-year-old De La Hoya has a three-inch height advantage and a six-and-a-half-inch reach advantage over the 33-year-old Julio Cesar Chavez. They both weighed in one pound under the 140-pound limit. Larry? Jim, for years, Chavez hasn't had the inclination or the inspiration to get into the kind of supreme condition he appears to be for De La Hoya. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Julio Cesar Chavez Oscar De La Hoya fight is scheduled for 12 rounds. There is no standing eight count, no three knockdown rules. Only the referee can stop the fight, and you can be saved by the belt in a 12th and final round only. Jim. All right, Harold. And as the challenger tonight for Julio Cesar Chavez's 140-pound championship, Oscar De La Hoya will enter the ring first. For his victories over John John Molina, Rafael Willis, Gennaro Hernandez, and Jesse James Leja, De La Hoya was everyone's choice as Fighter of the Year in calendar 1995. prepare for a lot of fights but when you're going against those legends strange things happen slip in the dressing room all kind of things can happen and you get into this ring this time walking up those steps and it's awful shaky what about walking out through this enormously pro Chavez crowd could that have an effect on young Delahoya? not so much the crowd as the fighter he's going into the ring with I went up against Muhammad Ali like that, and I thought, I'm well prepared. Now, all of a sudden, you realize this is the guy. I was going on my way to school, and they were arguing about it. He was the champ of the world, and shaky things start happening to you. You start doing awful and having strange thoughts. If you can only be yourself. Part of the question tonight, can Oscar De La Hoya be himself amid these circumstances? De La Hoya with 21 professional fights since having won the Olympic gold medal in Barcelona in 1992. 19 knockouts. Knockouts in each of his last four appearances. And amazingly enough, he enters the biggest fight of his professional career with a newly named head trainer Jesus Ribeiro, they call him the professor. It's an unusual move for the young fighter, Larry Merchant. Some might question it, having a new voice in your corner, but he seems to be comfortable with it. Rivera is an interesting character, a sort of customado philosopher, in the, as well as a fight trainer. Some Mike Katz of the Daily News said he's been teaching Willie Pep and Willie Shakespeare to De La Hoya. <laughs> In a moment, the music will begin for Chavez, and then it will be drowned out by the crowd. Official sources in the sport quarrel with Chavez's argument that he has had 99 fights and this will be the 100th. 
it is most fun to go along with Julio's view of things and to call this the 100th fight of his career. Who knows? Maybe it's even true. So the record that we cite for Julio Cesar Chavez, 97 wins, the loss to Frankie Randall, the draw with Pernell Whitaker, 79 knockouts. <laughs> And now let's take it up to Michael Buffer for a pre-fight introduction. And now, ladies and gentlemen, with the Nellis Air Force Base honor guard in attendance, displaying the colors, please rise for the national anthem. First of all, the Mexican national anthem to be performed by Mr. Pedro Fernandez. It's Culema, supervisor in attendance for the WBC, Eduardo Lamanzón. The three judges scoring this bout on a 10-point must system will be Onyx Hum Tum Tam, Larry O'Connell, and Daniel Van Deville. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, your referee, Joe Cortez. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the site where legends are made, Caesar's Palace of Las Vegas, Nevada. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the multicolored trunks and weighing in at 139 pounds. A young man who captured Olympic gold in 1992 and now has a perfect professional record of 21 victories without a loss, 19 knockouts, and he has won three world title belts. Tonight, he goes for world title number four. Ladies and gentlemen, from East Los Angeles, California, presenting the challenger, three-time world champion and reigning WBO lightweight champion of the world, the golden boy, Oscar De La Hoya. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, also weighing in at exactly 139 pounds, wearing white trimmed with blue and red. He brings a professional record into the ring of 97 victories, 79 knockouts with only one loss and one draw. One of the finest in the history of boxing. In that record, he has won five world title bouts and is considered by many as one of the greatest fighters of the last half century. Ladies and gentlemen, Damas y Caballeros con Culiacan, Mexico, presenting the five-time world champion and reigning WBC super lightweight champion of the world, Julio Cesar Chavez. Okay, Julio, Oscar, that you need that red gun at Camerino. I gave you the fight in the dressing room. I want a good, clean fight. Can I play Olympia? This is la mano. Dios bendiga los dos. Jim, this is youth, talent, ambition against experience, will, and pride. A fight that may be as simple as the power and speed of youth or as complicated as the will of a great warrior. Both fighters sparred upwards of 300 rounds at altitude in preparation for this. De La Hoya says he's in the best shape of his life. Chavez says he's in the best shape since March 17, 1990, his dramatic comeback win over Meldrick Taylor. First punch of the fight is a De La Hoya jab.
start for De La Hoya, who seems anxious to see what Chavez wants to do. If Oscar sticks with the jab, George, the challenge for Julio will be to get inside it somehow. That's right. Not only should Oscar establish the dominancy of his jab, but do not allow Chavez to hit him with one jab. You know, not only take not away Chavez's jab at the same time that he's establishing his own. That's right. Don't allow him to think that he Already can there is a all. cut alongside a the left eye of Chavez. It looks like a scrape. Not dangerous, but it's very early in the fight for blood to be showing. It came from the one right cross that De La Hoya landed, and now more blood as De La Hoya again lands with the right. And Chavez is already starting to flow above the left eye. And De La Hoya is landing that right hand, George. This is a veteran. He didn't come here tonight to lose a fight in one round. Oscar, stick the plan. If the jab open up the cut, stick with the jab. It may be a more dangerous cut than I first thought. Chavez was cut over the same eye in the first round of his tough decision victory over David Kamau. Oh, 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 oh. And now oh, Joe Cortez oh, oh, oh. stops because he wants a doctor to take a look at the cut. Round one. And this blood started flowing less than a minute into the fight. That cut was open in training. You can believe that. Hard to imagine that one right hand could have done that much damage, but it came after De La Hoya landed his first right cross. That was a big cover-up. And Chavez suddenly has more purpose. I think he realizes that this fight could be stopped sooner or later by cut. He's he going to try to engage De La Hoya right here. That, of course, has never happened to Julio Cesar Chavez in 99 previous recorded bouts. No, he did have a cut, if you recall, in his second fight with Frankie Randall, Jim. Yes, but you're suggesting the fight could be stopped, Larry, and that fight was stopped because of an unintentional headbutt cut. This one was caused by a punch. You're right. for Oscar De La Hoya. There's already desperation in Chavez. As we go to two Spanish-speaking corners tonight, our interpreter is Hector Garcia. Are you okay, Julio? Yes, I. Stay calm. The cut is pretty big. We're going to have to play by ear. I think that cut is pretty bad. It's not bleeding now. Just give me the towel. Okay. Yes, De La Hoya threw 52 punches by punch dash count in round one. Chavez only 18. How does the cut change Julio's strategy, George? Well, he didn't intend to be so aggressive this early. Chavez did not. Now he's having to put on some aggression to keep Oscar at bay. And this just isn't the kind of strategy he wanted. He wanted to play it cool for the first three or four rounds. And for De La Hoya, just stick with the jab and the plan, right? That's right. De La Hoya starts trying to open up this cut with too many right hands. The fight goes into the fourth round. Chavez gets renewed strength and courage, and he can change everything. Keep your cool, keep jabbing. De La Hoya is still picking his shots here in the first minute of round number two. So far, the blood not flowing again on Chavez's left eye. It has started again, Jim. Okay. It has indeed. And De La Hoya lands another right hand, and now the blood really begins to flow. Left hook, best punch of the bout so far for Chavez. De 
Delahoya going to the body with the left hook as Chavez stepped in there. Delahoya is starting to bring his chin down just a little lower. This works for Chavez because he's been missing with that left hook because of the height differential. Get your chin down and throw that hook. It's a different thing. Delahoya lands two it. short left hooks in there. Chavez came back with a counter right. Chavez and many of them silenced by the visible flow of blood. Ho, ho, ho! So, Delahoy has allowed uh, Chavez to relax a little bit. He shouldn't have allowed him that relaxation because he started to think and realize, hey, I am the master of this ring. I've been around a long time. You gotta stay on him, do something at all times. Delahoy has to. Yet in two rounds so far, George, Chavez has been unable to engage, get close to Delahoya and do any kind of damage. But that's the way he fights. He's never won the fight for one or two rounds. He gets closer and closer, and he starts to take over. Now, if he can just remember that, then time. Don't do nothing strange. Okay. We're going back to round one to show you the punches that open the cut on the left eye of Chavez. And that was a left jab to the left eye of Chavez. Normally you would expect a right hand to open the cut there, but this was a crisp left jab to the eye. Entirely correct, and the right hand that I have talked Surely. about came after that, so uh, it landed and caused the cut even earlier than might have first appeared to be the case. Statistically, through the first couple of rounds, De La Hoya throwing more than twice as many punches as Chavez. And you can see that Harold Letterman has given the first two rounds to the 23-year-old challenger. Oscar De La Hoya starting to land jab to the stomach. That's very important if you're fighting a puncher to take his power away from him in case the fight goes longer than five or six rounds. But it's also going to bring his chin down into Chavez's punching range, isn't it? No, De La Hoya is landing the left jab to the body, which means Chavez's power will start to diminish as the fight goes on. De La Hoya is starting to lean down a little too much, and that's dangerous for him. One thing Chavez has not done, he has always wor worn down his opponents, George, by punching to the body, I don't believe, in two oh, rounds plus that, that he's landed a body Let's punch yet. Let's go. That's because of that early cut. Sometimes you get a little hesitant. Chavez has got to realize it's going to happen close. Not going to anything is going to happen from the outside. You got to get close. They stay out for the time being in De La Hoya's punching range. And he continues to control Chavez with the jab and with body punches. And Chavez going backwards more than we've ordinarily seen him go backwards. For good reasons. Oscar De La Hoya has a jab like an ordinary right hand by the average fighter. That jab hurts you. It makes you want to stay away. Hard left hand to the body by De La Hoya as Chavez came in close. Then De La Hoya hey, backs up on, to try to find hey, punching hey, range again. Hey, 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 hold. Hey, come on, give me three rounds. Give me three rounds, yeah? Let's go. Let's go. That's an old Willis Hep move there. Hard counter hey, left hey, inside hey. there by De La Hoya as Chavez was stepping in. Oscar lands the uppercut and a right hand. 
He is finding the range and tattooing Chavez around the eye. But Chavez was able to get a little closer that time. Although he's missing from outside, he was able to get a little closer. He's going to have to take a lot of leather to get in close, George, unless he can find a better formula. And he should have uh, included that on the cost of the house when he took this bout. You're going to have to take some and give some, too. Take a lot and give some. De La Hoya getting just a little bit more aggressive now as the clock winds down in the third. Chavez, for the moment, seems without a clear plan as to how to get inside of De La Hoya's jam. Good left hook by Chavez. It was right on top of the brow. But so far, Chavez has looked his age. concentrated on winning a fight on points in years. This could be a deficit for him because he's been getting knockouts, looking for knockouts. Now you're in a fight where you may have to build up some points in case you don't get this knockout. He did score a tough decision victory over John John Molina early in 1995 when others say Oscar hasn't been pressured or roughed up in the ring. His supporters point to that fight and say, oh yes he has. And we may have some judges tonight who may like the aggression of uh, Cesar Chavez. Yeah, but he's not being the aggressive. Hard left hook by Chavez. That is the third good left hook that Chavez has landed. All to the chin. All because Oscar De La Hoya stands and waits for him to do something if he's not jabbing. You can't stand and wait. You got to do something. But Chavez, at the same time that he's mounting his best attack of the fight, continues to paw at his left eye, trying to keep the blood from hampering his vision. De La Hoya much more tentative now here in round four tasted some of Chavez's power. Good short left hook by De La Hoya. And he comes back with the right hand. And the blood bothering Julio as De La Hoya lands a vicious left hook. Now his nose is bleeding too. De La Hoya is starting to be himself now. Forget about all of that strategy and the new guy in your corner. Get out there and be yourself. Brutal left hook to the body by De La Hoya. Chavez's will seeming to be sapped now in the last minute of round four, it's been all Oscar De La Hoya. Now he's... Chef De La Hoya goes back to the summer, which is ideal for a youngster. I can't believe it. And Cortez takes Chavez to flip Homansky. Stay in our corner. Stay in our corner. That's it. He's calling the fight. The fight is over. Not 
nothing, George, do they call him the golden boy. The combination of a skillful performance, maybe just a little bit of good fortune. Chavez's bloody mask at the end. Simply too grotesque for Homansky to allow the fight to continue. But guys, the old guy was never in this fight because the young guy didn't let him get in there. He maintained his poise. He used his own strength. This kid is like a debutante with a knife in her purse. He looks like he looks like the golden boy, but he's got some iron and lead in those gloves. And if anyone was looking for the answer in round four, when Chavez mounted his fiercest attack of the fight, De La Hoya starts him with a left hook, turned matters around, and dominated the last minute before the stoppage. It reminds me of Clint Eastwood in The Unforgiven. He said, I'm, 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 well, I've always been lucky at killing people. <laughs> De La Hoya seems to be a little lucky at doing this stuff. When you're both good and lucky, that's a heck of a tough combination to beat. Well, let's throw away luck. He was good. George, he was terrific tonight. He put the right hand with the jab and then brought the left hook. And that in the end was the difference. Let's take a look at this flurry toward the end of the bout. Jab, right cross, left hook, left hook again, right cross across the top of the head, left hook, left hook again, a short right. Not all of those punches landing flush, but all of them stopping Chavez from being able to mount any kind of attack. And that's what Oscar De La Hoya, my only worry was for him, that he would not be himself and do what he normally does best. In the end, he simply smothered Chavez with speed and power. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Joe Cortez calls a halt to the bout. Dr. Flip Homansky has ruled that the former champion Julio Cesar Chavez was unable to continue because of severe lacerations to the eyes. The winner by technical knockout, winning his fourth world title belt and new WBC super lightweight champion of the world, the golden boy, Oscar De La Well, as a useful piece of trivia, no longer meaningful here, it's worth noting that Oscar De La Hoya won all three rounds on all three judges' cards to start the fight, so there was no funny scoring uh, at that early stage of the bout, and what a performance in round four, George. It's strange because Chavez was doing the best he could, and ordinarily against anyone else, that best would have been good enough, but this guy is a little better than best. De La Hoya, phenomenon, that's what he is. You see how Oscar feels about it? Larry Merchant's with him in the ring. Oscar, congratulations to the fight first. How did the cut eye change the fight in your judgment? Well, in my judgment, Julio Cesar Chavez had something more to worry about in his corner. We knew if a cut, a broken nose, or if he was hurt, that would change all that during the fight. So that's what we try to accomplish early on in the round. Well, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by what you just said, that you knew if something like that happened, he would have a problem? Well, Julio Cesar Chavez, once they attack him, once he knows that he can back up a fighter, he's in trouble, he's lost. And what we try to do, we, we, that's, that's our, that was our game plan, our, men, our mental game plan, to have him think up in his corner because when he's thinking, wow, this guy throws hard jabs, this guy throws left hooks, and then the cut occurs, he has something else to worry about. Instead of, uh, instead of his boxing, boxing tactics, he has the cut to worry about. So you weren't surprised after that cut that he didn't seem to be the uh, relentless aggressor that he was at his best? Well, Julio Cesar Chavez was still the aggressor. He was still putting pressure. He's a true warrior. He's a true champion. But the blood, the cut, the broken nose was affecting him. You say the broken nose. Do you know that he, you broke his nose as well? It felt on my left hook as if I hit a good, solid left hook, and the blood just started gushing out like Janelle Hernandez's nose the way I did to his. All right, we're going to take a look at a replay of the punches that caused the cut. Describe what you see. Well, right here I was throwing the jabs. I think that right, that straight jab, that's when the, cut, the blood started coming down. That jab right there, stiff, straight jab that we were working on. What did it feel like to see him in so much trouble, to see the blood gushing from his eye, 
this legend and the chances getting larger and larger that you were going to take him? Well, I was very surprised because uh, Julio Cesar Chavez, he's known to get cut. He's known to have a, a very tender nose. But I really didn't think that my stiff jab was going to cause a, a big gash over the eye. I guess I was wrong. I, I kind of try to uh, stay humble about my punches mm -hmm. because I believe now my punching power is pretty strong. But of course, still, we have much to learn in the gym. What do you feel now about how Mexican and Mexican-American fans will treat you having won this fight in this fashion? Well, I hope they're on my side, and hopefully there, there's some that are on my side because I want to I want to try to be like Julio Cesar Chavez. I want to try to be like the great champion that he is, and he will still be the great champion of the future because he's a, he's a great person inside the ring and outside the ring. Thank you very much, Oscar. Jim?